Welcome to a meeting of your planning commission, the official local planning agency for the cities of Tampa, Temple Terrace, Plant City, and unincorporated Hillsborough County. The planning commission provides innovative leadership and long-range vision that contributes to the creation of a thriving, prosperous community that offers opportunity, fairness, and choice in how we live, move, learn, work, and play. For more information about the Planning Commission, please call 813-272-5940, follow us on social media, or visit our website at planhillsboro.org. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the May 13th, 2019 public hearing of the Planning Commission on Tampa Compre Comprehensive Plan Amendments. We thank you for the, attending this meeting. Your comments and participation are encouraged. If you will please sign the register at the rear of the room and turn off any electronic devices that may be a distraction. If you wish to address the commission in, on a specific amendment, we ask that you please complete the appropriate public comment sign-in sheet at the back of the room. When addressing the commission, please begin by stating your name, address, and speaking directly into the microphone. For those of you who are not familiar with our process, the meeting will be conducted as follows. The agenda item will be introduced. Staff will give their presentation with a 15-minute time limit. The applicant will be given the opportunity to make a presentation with a 15-minute time limit. Following presentations, members of the public may address the planning commission when recognized by the chairman. Public comment will be heard for three minutes per person. The applicant will be afforded a three-minute period for rebuttal or response. Planning commissioners will then ask questions. Public comment will be closed. Then upon a motion, second, and discussion, a vote will be taken. Roll call, please. Good evening, Powell. Here. Dix. Here. Green. Here. Joseph. Here. Chris. Here. Marino. Here. Wilman. Here. Thrower. Here. Wilds. Here. Dickerson? Here. Rodriguez? Here. Dowdy? Here. Thank you. You have a quorum. Okay. Thank you. First up is uh, Tampa Conference of Plan Amendment 19-04. Good evening, Commissioners. Jennifer Malone with your Planning Commission staff. I'm here to present on Tampa um, Plan Amendment 19-04. This is in the West Shore Planning District, um, and I do have an aerial. Um, the outline of the site is in the blue with the black um, line. This is West Laurel Street and North Spruce. Um, the interstate is out of frame, but if you were to get off the interstate, you can just get right on um, Lois. I'm sorry, I said Spruce. I meant North Lois Avenue. And you can hop on Lois, and that'll take you right to the mall. And we have Spruce in the north. Um, this is a multifamily complex in the north. This is a City of Tampa public works facility, um, which I'm pointing at with my cursor. Um, I have the um, Carver City Lincoln Garden Civic Center here and then public works and fleet maintenance all through this area. This is the um, the, Loretta in the Loretta Ingram Civic Center with the Orange Star and then single family detached homes to the south. It is a privately initiated small scale amendment at approximately um, 0.81 acres and the request before you would be going from residential 10 to residential 35. Here's some site pictures. This is the corner of West Laurel Street and North Lois Avenue. This is that multifamily development I point out earlier on my aerial. So this is North Lois right here and West Laurel um, on the bottom of the frame. And here's just another view. This is a, a portion of the subject site. It comprises several parcels, but this is a portion of the subject site that's fronting North Lois Avenue. And then these are two other subject sites that front North Lois Avenue. And then this um, was a, a, an interesting picture because these uh, houses basically back up to a City of Tampa drainage ditch and then the further on the City of Tampa Public Works facility. So when you're walking down North Lois, you can kind of see it in between in the distance in between the two houses. And these are both the subject of the plan amendment site. Now I'm on West Laurel Street. Um, this is a, a vacant parcel along West Laurel Street that is also part of the amendment and I'm facing north. This is another portion of the subject site along West Laurel Street. And this is another portion of the subject site along West Laurel Street. Um, I've moved 
further down West Laurel. Um, I'm looking east right now. On the left-hand side of your frame is um, the buffering that the city of Tampa has done for their public works facility. Um, that is designated regional mixed use 100 on the future land use map, which I will show you next. And it's interfacing those single family homes across the street, which is residential 10. Um, just to give some context, when I took this picture, the subject sites were behind me on the side of the street where the, um, where the buffering in the wall is. I just walked down a little bit further. So I don't normally show an existing land use map, but because of the, um, the development pattern in this area, we thought that it would be um, wise to show that. So um, the, the parcels are single family slash mobile home, which is the, the yellow, and then vacant is the light gray. That whole public works facility, including a city of Tampa drainage ditch that kind of backs up to the subject site, this is all public. It's all the blue. And this is that multifamily that I showed you earlier. Um, when I kind of peeked between two houses and could see a view of the city of Tampa Public Works facility, I was like right here. And so you just kind of have that straight shot. Um, and then when we're walking down Laurel, this is where the, the wall was showing that buffering. And you can kind of see a little bit of the interstate to the south. This is the adopted future land use map. Um, the subject sites residential 10 and then we have regional mixed use 100 to the north um, generally in the area we're just seeing residential 10 and regional mixed use 100 um, regional mixed use 100 is a very intensive land use category um, it is the city of tampa's most intensive outside of the central business district which is downtown tampa and then this is the proposal would uh, be requesting residential 35. Um, this would increase the density from a potential of eight or existing the applicant has up to eight units that, that could be on the site with the residential 10 feature land use category this would increase that to a potential of up to 28 it would also increase the square footage allowed from about 12,000 to 21,000 square feet however the subject site wouldn't be able to utilize all that square footage it would have to meet the locational criteria and the comprehensive plan um, and this uh, that would this amendment would not remove that the the applicant would still have to meet that to utilize any of the square footage we did send this out for agency review um and randy goers is here from the city of tampa to kind of explain after my presentation that the land development coordination department did have an objection but the planning and urban design department did not so um randy will speak after i'm done on that decision um this is consistent with uh several comprehensive plan policies we did find that this would provide a more sensitive transition in density than what is currently there right now um, it's a big drop off between the residential uh, the regional mixed use 100 down to that residential 10 it's a little dramatic so we did find that this would meet that that policy direction about having sensitive transitions um, north lewis avenue is also a collector roadway and it's um, we did find that this would be appropriate for that area and it would encourage new housing on underutilized land which is another policy within our comprehensive plan um, our comprehensive plan would also also seeks to promote housing choices within proximity to employment civic uses and transit corridors um, there's a number of civic uses in the area the Loretta Ingram Center um, the Carver C Lincoln Garden Civic Center are all within um, located near the subject site um, and we did find that um, this would meet those objections, those policies as well. And lastly, the comprehensive plan seeks to designate um, multifamily areas where greater multi residential development is desired. Um, our comprehensive plan states that the district, the West Shore District, will have an estimated residential population in excess of 36,000 by 2040. And there are several large scale multifamily developments in the area, but the West Shore District will need to provide that um, more areas as multifamily to allow that lower density transitional um, development to support the increasing residential population in this area. And we did find that that would that um, is in line with all of these with all of our comprehensive plan policies about increasing um, residential density in this area. And so, with that, Planning Commission staff did find it consistent. And that concludes my presentation, and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Yep. Good evening, Randy Gores of the City's uh, Planning and Urban Design Division. Uh, as Jennifer mentioned, uh, the staff uh, over the city 
In addition to the LDC, several other departments reviewed it. There weren't any objections from the transportation or the other utility departments. Uh, land, land Development Coordination did have an objection. Uh, their, their report is in the staff report, but primarily it was in regard they felt that the, in, the increase from R10 to R35 was still adding more density in the area that was going to affect the character of development around the site, and, and primarily the single family development uh, across the street uh, on both sides uh, in an area that uh, historically from the city's perspective has been very sensitive to change. So they uh, had uh, an objection based on that. They also cited there's a, I think you may be familiar with it, there's a, a provision in the comprehensive plan that says that if, a, uh, if you're seeking a plan amendment and you're in an area and you don't have the same plan category adjacent or, uh, or less uh, or more than you, um, uh, the, that it creates some red flags and city council is required to look at it and make them overturn it, but staff typically objects because it's not, uh, doesn't meet the rotational criteria or the provision in that plan. Uh, so part of the, the objections from LDC were mostly procedural because of the comprehensive plan the way it's written and how we review plan amendments. The other part was they felt it was inconsistent because of the increase in density. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, yeah. so Randy, before now, so can you explain the urban design division's point of view on this? Uh, we didn't have any. Uh, there weren't any actual written comments. There were there were some verbal comments, but nobody uh, felt strong enough to uh, actually put anything in writing, send it over. Um, you know, basically, it was a little bit of echoing what LDC it was uh, just a. And mostly from the concern that this is a neighborhood that historically has been very sensitive to change. Uh, and there was some difference of opinion on whether or not this change would be <coughs> such that would create, you know, some, some far reaching changes in the future or if this was just filling out the block. So uh, our division didn't have any, even given the opportunity to put something down in a comment in writing, uh, they didn't. So I would just say just go with what the comments that you received. Okay, thank you. Uh, would the applicant like to speak on this item? Good evening. My name is Silla. I reside at 615 Luzon Avenue. The full name? Huh? Full name, Sheikh. C H E I K H. Middle initial T as in Tom. And the last name, Silla. S as in Sam. Y L L A. I reside at 615 Luzon Avenue, Tampa. 33606. I am an architect and an urban planner, urban designer. That's been in private practice in Tampa for 31 years. We've done a lot of work in the area. Um, I've been retained by the property owners, uh, not a developer, property owners, who basically have joined hands and have decided to seek the plan amendment. So in this particular case, uh, with your indul indulgence, can, can, I, can I ask Jennifer, do you mind if I can, if we can have the aerial at the, at the very beginning that you had, which I think was great. Uh, staff, Jennifer did a wonderful job in making a case for the plan amendment in this particular case, so much so that I really don't think that I can add a whole lot to it. But if you just look at essentially um, the aerial, uh, I mean, I can say that Carver City is a very important neighborhood and community. And I'm pleased to be, I'm pleased and honored definitely to have been retained by the property owners to work in that neighborhood. However, in this particular case, our focus is essentially on a block area that number one is at the north edge of the, of the neighborhood that we're talking about. So it's not located anywhere in the center, okay? Number two, you really have a great deal of development taking place. Regional mixed use, 100. And right now when you look at it, the single biggest landowner in that area is the city of Tampa. And quite frankly, 10 years from now, I think that things are gonna be different. So essentially by closing the block, and that's really what we're talking about here, is the closure of the block and the establishment also of the edge of the street. 
By doing so, we're not requesting really regional mixed use 100. No, we're going for something that's much more modest, and that's mixed use, uh, not mixed use, residential 35, to create a transition between the regional mixed use and the single family that is to the south. Uh, and in my view, we just want to focus in that area. Now, if what we're proposing was located in the middle of the block, okay, uh, I think it would be a tough sale. But in this particular case, the property owners have joined hands and said, hey, look, we know that change is coming, and they want to play a role in that particular change. And in this particular case, it's a transition that basically uh, will help um, between the regional mixed use and the single family area. So that's really what they're trying to do. Um, and these are long, long time residents of the area. Um, Mr. Collins, who's there, is one of the six residents, uh, um, property owners. Mr. and Mrs. Rodriguez have been there for a long time. I met their kids, but I cannot call them kids because they are grown-ups. So it's not like a private developer that came in and basically put together, bought properties and decided, well, we're going to build this project. So in this particular case, I'm urging the commissioners, yes, to take into consideration uh, the point of view of everybody, but clearly, clearly there are pri private property owners that are bought very intense developments, and if they decide in their own wisdom and vision, knowing that things are going to change, and they, they're not bothered, quite frankly, by the big development, the RM, uh, uh, Regional Mixed Use 100, they're not bothered by it. Uh, but they want to come together and establish basically the transition. And with that, uh, I'm going to close it and we'll be open to respond to any question. And I thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you. Anyone want to speak under uh, public comment for this item? If you'd like to speak, please come forward, state your name and address. You have three minutes. Hi, my name is Kenya Sutton, and um, I reside at 4202 Union Street, Tampa, Florida, 33607. Um, I'm a resident who has also lived in the neighborhood for many years. Although I look young, I am 44 years old, and I was born and raised in Carver City. Um, I'm affected by the development, the multi um family homes that are on the other side. Um, I, like I said, I live on Union Street and I live right in front of the large multifamily buildings. Me getting into work, going to work, trying to get out every day, it, it is an inconvenience. Um, people who live or, or who want to uh, build on that property, several of them don't live in the neighborhood, so they don't understand how crowded and how congested it already is. Um, we have children in the neighborhood um, that are trying to cross the street. My, my mother lives across um, that lot and she can't ride her bicycle or scooter or get across that street just because of how busy and um, crowded it is. So as we said, we wanna look for the future and we don't mind building and making our neighborhood okay. But although it is on a corner, it is very dangerous. For our, um, I'm a teacher and I have students who are on that corner as well and I see them there in the morning. Um, as a resident of the neighborhood, uh, they do have multi, multi um, parking garages. Those residents who live in the neighborhood across the street, although they have parking there, they park in front of our homes and they walk across the street. Um, and there, it, since it's public property, there's really nothing we can do about it except say, hey, can you move your car? We can't have company at our own homes because you live across the street and you decide not to park there because it's easier for you to enter the building that's closer on the um, sidewalk. So I just want you to take that into consideration of somebody who's actually living on the property and living in the neighborhood, not just owning the um, property and trying to expand. This is from a resident who is actually in the heart of it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else like to speak? 
Good evening, everyone. My name is Patricia Givens. I live at 4302 West Laurel Street, um, two blocks down from where the property um, rezoning will be. Uh, I am the president of Carver City Lincoln Garden Civic Association, and I'm here to represent the association as well as surrounding um, community members. Um, we do oppose the rezoning. Um, reason being, we're trying, we've been fighting and constantly fighting, trying to preserve the community, to keep it as a single family home community. As many of you know, we are already surrounded by apartments. We have commercial businesses. We have um, restaurants, malls surrounding our community. We're right in the middle of that. And rezoning that property is gonna be a Pandora's box for us. Because once you rezone it, it's gonna open the door for everyone else to come in and to rezone the vacant properties in that community. So we can't say no when you've already opened that door for a developer or for someone to come in and to build something other than a single family home. Um, we do ask that you really consider that. Um, be mindful of the community. We do want to keep it intact as a family, single family um, homes in that community. Um, the fourplex, uh, multiplex um, building, it's gonna stick out like a sore thorn. It's, it, I saw the design of the building. It does not mesh anything within the community. It just looks like an office building. And um, it's gonna really take away from the, the um, effect of the community. And also rezoning it, also, um, I know he said they got consensus from neighbors. We have a lot of neighbors that's opposed to it. There's a petition going around right now that um, a majority of the community is not for it. And um, I heard that, you know, we don't like change. It's not that we don't like change. We want to better our community, but we don't want to be overburdened with apartments, with commercial businesses in the community. We're right in the middle of everything right now. We want to try to keep that intact as much as possible. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Please come forward. Good afternoon. My name is Nancy Sutton, and my address is 4116 West Laurel Street. I am adjacent to the property that um, is the proposed um, rezoning of the property. Um, I, too, have been in the neighborhood for a long time. I've been there over 50 years. And um, I am not opposing to my neighbors Rebuilding, I am opposing to the rezoning of the neighborhood. As Ms. Gibbons has just said, we'd like to keep our neighborhood as a single family neighborhood and not as all of these um, multiplexes. Uh, I have a grandchild and some nieces and nephews who walk the neighborhood, ride bicycles in the neighborhood. I am concerned of their safety. There are certain times in the afternoon where I cannot even get out of my um, house. I don't go out at certain times because of the density of traffic. And if we build those houses in there, as she said, it's going to open up a floodgate and we'll have all of these houses coming in that are multifamily. And at each class, uh, family that comes in, usually have at least two sometimes four automobiles, so that's going to affect the traffic flow in there. We are asking that you consider us and uh, keep our community as a single family community and not as these um, multiplexes. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else under public comment? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, ma'am. I do have um, petitions that have been signed. And I don't know. I have petitions. Yeah, you can give it to the recording okay. secretary. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak under public comment? Please come forward. Good afternoon. My name is Gloria Dean McNair. I live 4321 West Green Street. And um, I oppose the uh, changing rezoning of this property because I was recently here and I know what the intentions are. Once one piece of property is rezoned to have multi-families, then other additional properties will 
be up for rezoning. The property re behind me was up before you not too long ago where someone wanted to put uh, 20 units right in my back door in the middle of the community. So I opposed the rezoning of the property because, as I said, it's going to open a floodgate plus the density and the transportation problems are already there. The people in the area that is up for rezoning right now are already blocked in. The only way they can get out is to come out on Lois Avenue or go out on Spruce Street to get out of that community. And it is a floodgate of traffic. It's very difficult to maneuver in there. I oppose that because of the density that it will cause in the community. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Any other public comment? <clears throat> Would the applicant like to respond? Yes. You, you have three minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, board members, the theme that I'm hearing from most of those who oppose, uh, by the way, it's not a rezoning, it's a plan amendment. So we're not in the rezoning process. So we're just talking about the amendment uh, of the plan, but fundamentally, we can consider it to be the same thing, so, yeah, okay. Um, I respect everyone's point of view here, um, and I admire you for being involved in your community. Um, as an architect and an urban planner, I've always felt that to make a neighborhood, you really need uh, folks who live in that neighborhood really be involved in the process. Um, the theme that I'm hearing for those who oppose the project, or I should say the plan amendment, is floodgate. Floodgate. There's a trickle and there's a floodgate. So what I would suggest to you and suggest to everybody is that a decision be made strictly on the merits of the project. It's one thing to talk about a project that is about 28 dwelling units, okay? That is R35, but it's another to talk about a regional mixed-use project. Those are very, very different in terms of scale, in terms of scope, in terms of intensity. So anytime a project comes before the Planning Commission or the City of Tampa, and you are concerned about it, I think rather than just saying floodgate, okay, I think each project has to be looked at based on its own merit, based on what you are concerned about. So that's the floodgate issue. The last, am I, am I done with the three minutes? Huh? Can you direct your comments to the board? To the board? Okay. All right. Yeah. Th thank, thanks. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate that, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that. Uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I, I apologize. Uh, but in this particular case, oh yeah, the other, the other issue is just transportation and density. Um, you can look at it really from a negative side or you can look at it from the positive side. As an architect and an urban planner, urban designer, I happen to believe that to make a livable city, we need density. The more people we have living in one area, the more that area becomes livable, the more you can fight crime. And actually, you reduce traffic, quite frankly, when you have more people living together. So, and, and the best example that I can cite is basically West Shore Palms. And I've driven over the weekend looking at it. It's a fantastic area. Multifamily is not a dirty thing. It's a good thing. And in your policy, quite frankly, there's an encouragement for more people to basically live in multifamily. And it's something that basically uh, is needed, quite frankly. And then as far as traffic is concerned, crossing the street, Lois runs north-south. And it's taken by many people, quite frankly. So it's not the development in that area that brings that traffic. It's just that that's the nature of uh, uh, transportation. So those are really the three points that I wanted to make, and that is just the merits on making a decision based on the merits of each project. The second one is basically transportation 
and uh, and density. So anyway, okay. I, I appreciate Mr. Chairman your indulgence. Thank okay, you. thank you. Commissioners, any questions? Commissioner Green? Oh, Green? <laughs> yeah, I anticipate. <laughs> you saw me reaching for it. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have uh, I have some concerns about this um, um, proposed amendment. Um, um, although I, 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 I um, I'm sort of torn. I understand um, the city's uh, opposition on this, um, and uh, of course, um, uh, my friend Silla, who's uh, um, proposing this uh, amendment. But um, I do feel that the uh, um, uh, that this community is sort of constantly sort of warding off the. Um, uh, uh, higher intensity development um, uh, around the around the particularly around the edges, um, but I did want to ask Randy one one question about uh, about Lois Avenue um, uh, because here's here's where I think and I could be persuaded one way or the other on this one, uh, but um, uh, but the you know what is the city's position on Lois it, Lois Avenue itself because you have it. From uh, is it Union? Is that the street at the bottom of the site? Up to Spruce, um, it's sort of well. It's an asymmetrical street essentially. You've got you've got single-family houses on one side. You've got you know um, um, higher-density development on the other side, and of course this is a direct route to the International Mall off the interstate. Um, and um, are there any traffic signals on Lewis? Well, there, there are the traffic signals at, I believe, um, at Cyprus and then up at, uh, uh, at Boy Scout. Spru at Spruce, Spruce, Cyprus, yeah, and then at, okay. the, at the end at the, near the International Plaza. Um, you know, the, I'm, I'm not sure what, what, your, what your question is on Lois. It, it is, uh, and I don't know if there's any more improvements planned for Lois. That's mm -hmm. something I didn't look at. But there has been some improvements made to Lois for uh, improving efficiency and 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 the turning uh, of it, but it's a high traffic, high yeah. traveled road. We all know that, and right. it's, it's getting traffic from International Plaza as well as mm -hmm. from Kennedy Boulevard. <coughs> okay, I'll, I'll I'll stop. I have to think about this okay. some more. Any other questions, Commissioner Wilman? Thanks. I have a question for Jennifer. Um, on the map, the future land use map that you had shown in the presentation, maybe you can go to that. The yeah. adopted or proposed? Um, either one. Okay, um, that's adopted. There's a, um, right above the subject site property, there's a, a hatched box. Mm -hmm. Can you tell it's, me what that is? It's um, it's the drainage ditch, it's water. That's the drainage yep. ditch. Okay, and do you know if that drainage ditch is assigned to the city site or if it's for the it's part of the roadway. city site. Okay, yes. so it's for it's site development. So, yeah. um, so all of that residential ten that's on the north side of the subject site is part of the city of Tampa property, and it's um, either a drainage ditch or some kind of yes, or some um, kind of maintenance, maintenance facility. facility. Okay. Yes, and it's it's quite a. Um, it has that's where they bring all their public works trucks, and when you drive down there, it's it's quite a sight to behold in. Mm -hmm. Um, interfacing some some single family homes, but the only access is off of Clark Avenue from Spruce. So we kind of traveled all the way down Laurel up Grady, and this is where you can get into all of that activity. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Um, Any other questions, Commissioner Chris? And this might be for Randy, but <clears throat> is the, is it the city's long term view to hold on to the to the maintenance yard or whatever you call it? I'm going to say yes because there, is, there, there aren't any plans that I know of otherwise. Uh, it, the city hangs on to its land, especially for the stormwater and retention, uh, pretty much until they can find a better way of taking care of that. You know, I mean, if we don't want to be giving up retention areas um, when stormwater is a big issue. So to my knowledge, there's no plans okay. to do anything other Thank than you. what they're doing with it. I had a quick second question, if that's okay. okay that's and fine. Maybe Commissioner Marino could even answer this. But how, how far is this site from the proposed West Shore Intermodal Center? Would you classify it as within a 
easily walkable distance. Uh, that's located where again? At the... Cypress. Um, well, they say a quarter mile is a, is a walkable distance. I'm not sure if that's a quarter mile or not. Maybe more than that. Maybe half a mile? If I may, um, yep. it, so it's near Jefferson High School, correct? Yes. Okay, I can just look that up real quick on my phone while Andy, Randy continues to answer questions. Okay. <laughs> Com <laughs> Commissioner Bell? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just south of uh, Grace uh, Street there, like you can kind of see like where the map starts to change color, but I can't see what that is. It looks like it's, you know, brown, um, similar to the um, proposed land use here. And I just wanted to find out, is that also residential 35 or is that um, That's existing. a higher? Um, are you looking at the future land use or the existing land use map? Uh, I'm looking at the uh, the, um, the existing, I believe here. Yeah, the existing. Um, it's on the adopted future land use map that's in their packet. Yeah. Um, the oh, the all the way up here? No, no all no, the way to at the, the bottom. The, the, the bottom See, by oh, Grace, this, Grace, like coming mm, over to the go taking to the west, to Jennifer, the left, to the in west. the left hand corner. So you kind of like yeah. So see like right below you, yeah, like right it there. It goes, seems oh, like that's kind of oh a sliver. A sliver, and uh, I'm just curious if you just knew off the top of your head if that was. You know. Um, I can look that up as well, but if memory serves me correctly, that um, I believe that was residential ten. But I can I can check. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Marino. Uh, this question is for the applicant. Did the applicant meet with the neighborhood association? You, you can come forward. I'm sorry. I did didn't, did I didn't. you meet with Lingard's Carver City uh, prior we, to? We today? went to one of their meetings um, ten days ago or so. Uh, and uh, we had an opportunity to make a presentation, yeah. but uh, we didn't find them receptive. Yeah. So. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. Other questions? I, I'll follow up on Commissioner Cress's question earlier. Um, this is quite a walk to West, to the, at least to Jefferson High School. It's about three miles on Google. So I thought it was closer. Um, and to reply to Commissioner Powell's question, it looks like along that that edge is then fronting on Cyprus, and it's residential 20 in the brown. And then on the other side of Cyprus is more of the RMU 100. So the land use on that edge of, of the neighborhood does change and get more dense. Okay. Any other questions? Comments, Commissioner Wilman. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I had the wrong address. Yeah, it's it's about... 0.7 miles away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought that that was incorrect. So when that's what you get for doing things on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was that. But, yeah. Uh, Commissioner Wilman, did you have any other comments, questions? Someone like to make a motion. Commissioner Dowdy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move that we find uh, City of Tampa uh, plan amendment TACPA 1904 consistent with the uh, City of Tampa comprehensive plan. Okay. Do we have a second? We got a motion by Commissioner Dowdy. Second? Second by Commissioner Wilman. Any further discussion? Questions? Okay. All in favor of the motion as stated, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. aye. Okay. Those opposed, please raise your hands. Okay, those in favor, it's com oh, com one, two, six, six in favor, and uh, the Commissioner Joseph, Commissioner Wilds, and Commissioner Green, is that, are the, those opposed? So Commissioner Joseph, Commissioner Wilds, and Commissioner Green are opposed. All the others are in favor, motion passes, six to three. Okay, thank you. We are going to move on to uh, Tampa Comprehensive Plan Amendment 19-03. Good evening, 
Commissioners. Jay Collins Planning Commission staff. Up next for your hearings tonight is TACPA 19-03. Uh, this is generally in the South Tampa Planning District. This is in the Gandy Sun Bay South neighborhood. This is along South Manhattan Avenue. This is an aerial of the site. The site itself is uh, the highlighted portion of that. Uh, it's a pretty large site at about 16 and a half acres. It is a vacant site. Uh, if you'll notice on the aerial here, it kind of looks like, um, uh, what would you say, like, like, a, like a tomahawk, like a hatchet, like if you were at an Atlanta Braves game and you're doing it, right? So the handle of that hatchet down there is actually owned by the city of Tampa. That's a 50-foot right-of-way that is going from Interbay all the way up north to meet with the area to the north of there, which is actually owned by Robinson High School that 50-foot right-of-way owned by the city of Tampa. Directly to the west of that is a 14-acre site that is owned by the state of Florida. Uh, both of these are thought of in use for greenways and trails. Uh, there is a plan for a South Tampa Greenway. We'll talk about that uh, in a bit. Uh, some of the other things that we have in this uh, general area, directly to the south of the subject site, uh, you can see some industrial uses that are there. You can see the intensive commercial uses, some open storage that is there. As I'm moving to the east along Interbay Boulevard, there is a, again, uh, transitional use 24 industrial piece of property that is currently vacant or underutilized. Moving a little bit further up to the north as I approach uh, Manhattan Avenue there, uh, or excuse me, as I approach Lois Avenue, you can see yet again another intensive commercial use and open storage facility. And then moving up Manhattan, going to the north, you'll see some multifamily housing on both sides of Manhattan, excuse me, of Lois right there. And then further afield, if I just expand myself further and further back, you can see the single family detached uses that are surrounding this area. So background, this is publicly initiated. Uh, this is a regular scale amendment, <coughs> just over 16 acres. Currently the use is transitional, excuse me, currently the land use is transitional use 24, uh, and staff is requesting public semi-public. This is an amendment, as this one and the next one, to the transitional use 24 land use viability study. Basically what that is, is a staff uh, initiated study with the cooperation of the city of Tampa to look at this land use and ask the question simply, is this still a viable land use for this piece of property as well as what's going around it with the trends? So we're asking the question, such as we did with Robinson High School in the last, um, the last cycle, what is the best land use for that piece of property? How does it best fit into the neighborhood? So continuing on, this is just one of the site pictures. I'm actually standing on Manhattan Avenue uh, in the, uh, the, the actual bicycle lane, if you will, the actual greenway, and looking at the site. Uh, again, the site is vacant, 16 and a half acres. Uh, I missed the shot of the Osprey. There's a lot of wildlife out there. Uh, this is Manhattan Avenue looking south. So again, I'm standing in the greenway. So to my left is the actual parcel, and to the right, Manhattan Avenue, and you can see some new construction with some of the townhouse development that is going along Manhattan Avenue. Again, just a closer picture of those uh, townhomes. So just a little bit north from where we just were, this is the intersection of South, Math South Manhattan Avenue and West Pintor Place. Basically, just to give you a flavor of some of the single-family detached neighborhoods that are in the area. And this is further afield on the other side of those townhomes that are being constructed, the intersection of South Manhattan Avenue and West McCoy Street. Uh, this was a great picture. It kind of wraps a lot of everything together to talk about when you have a neighborhood node. There's a convenient serving goods store there. There's multifamily housing that is being built. There's a park directly across the street. There is transit right there with Route 17. And I don't have a picture of it, but just on the other side, there's actually another small school. So again, one of the uh, neighborhood nodes in the area. So the adopted future land use, the transitional use 24 is outlined there in black, transitional use 24 to the south as well as areas to the east. We talked about some of the uses along South Manhattan, those being the multifamily as well as the neighborhood serving commercial uses. You can see the residential 20 to the west of Manhattan Avenue 
basically, again, Manhattan, if the cursor and I will agree with one another, is running north-south right here. So you can see all of the residential 20 that is going up and down on South Manhattan. You can see residential 10 with the single-family detached neighborhoods further afield. If the amendment were to be uh, adopted by Tampa Comprehensive, excuse me, by Tampa uh, City Council with the public, semi-public, and so what are some of the potential intensities and densities with this actual land use amendment? Currently, these are in public ownership, but it does have a transitional use 24 amendment, or excuse me, a transitional use 24 land use. So we need to talk about what that existing potential is. This is also part of the conversation about why this land use study is of value to the city and also to the public, because what we're doing is we're actually providing the public a true reflection of what is occurring in their neighborhood and what is occurring in the city. This is property that has been owned by the state for a trail and for a park, yet the existing potential of this site is just under 400 units of housing in just over a million or a million square feet of commercial or industrial space. However, the state of Florida has bought the property for a park. So you can see part of the disconnect there why the transitional use 24 may not be the best land use for this site. So public, semi-public. Uh, again, government-owned facilities, whether they are recreation facilities, such as a park or a wastewater treatment facility. But it can also be churches, hospitals, schools, such as Robinson directly to the north. Now, the potential we put is not applicable. Why? Because the FAR in the density is not specifically defined. What I mean by that is transitional use 24 has an FAR of 1.5. It has a density of 24 units to the acre. Public semi-public does not define those intensities and densities. Rather, it is looked at with the idea of saying what is compatible to your surrounding area and what is a public good. So consistency, there are quite a few policies for this. Obviously, uh, recreation and open space, uh, parks are good for people. I think we can go through that and not actually have to put those policies there. So we'll specifically talk about providing a greenway uh, from the Gandy Bridge to Picnic Island and further that greenway from Picnic Island into downtown Tampa. So those are actual policies that are called out in the Tampa Comprehensive Plan. Uh, future land use, this kind of does go again with the idea of the public, semi-public. Areas adjacent to or within neighborhoods that are planned for non-residential shall be developed in a manner that is sensitive and compatible. So that again talks about the compatibility issues of when you do develop under public, semi-public. And uh, lastly, for another policy out of the coastal management, uh, acquiring land within the coastal high hazard area, this is a large piece of property within the coastal high hazard area, to provide recreation opportunities as well as to reduce the risk of property damage from any type of flooding that may occur. Uh, and you can see from that picture there, there are a series of ditches that crisscross through this. Uh, I'm sure for an amenity we can call them canals in the future. And so with that, Planning Commission staff recommends that the proposed map amendment be found consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the Imagine 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan. I thank you, and this concludes this presentation. Okay. City of Tampa, does City of Tampa have anything to say on this? Or There were no, uh, uh, no objections to this plan amendment. Okay. Thank you. Any public comment on this item? No public comment? Questions from commissioners? Commissioner Dowdy? Nope. 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 Any questions from commissioners? Commissioner? Uh, if I could just, I'll make a comment and then a, a question. Um, so I, I live in this area, and, and this item actually came up at our uh, Port Tampa Civic Association meeting. So um, just so I can exactly tell um, my neighbors, if so this this will preserve land for recreational use and if it ever is to change for development it has to come back to the planning commission and then to the city council you want to talk about how parks are developed in the city <laughs> well it, well if it's I mean, it's it's meant to be for busy. public public use and recreation but yes. the the, concern, yeah. the current concern was there's a lot of property and 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 uh you know some neighbors uh, had uh, you know the the transitional use 24 had actually come up um, so um, if, if if the land is ever to go back from public semi-public to anything else 
it would have to go back through the same process oh, of playing. Oh, 100 percent. Okay. 100 percent. And, and also, both of these pieces of property have been in public ownership for over a decade. Mm -hmm. So this is not something that just appeared overnight. Mm -hmm. this, this has been a long time coming, and they've been studying the Greenway Trail for quite a while. And, and yeah, this is, we're, we're late to the party on this one. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, just, just a question of following up on um, Commissioner um, uh, Marino's um, um, comment. Could it ever revert back to a, um, could this land ever revert back once it's designated? I, I mean, Isn't certainly it? if the city at some point chose to um, develop it or sell it to some, you know, as in some way to somebody else who wanted to develop it in a way that was inconsistent with the public, quasi-public, they would have to come and get another plan amendment to something else. So they, they could utilize it for other uses besides a park under the public, I mean, but they'd have to be a public use, uh, public, you know, consistent with the land use category. Okay. Anything. So you could build like a community center or something like yeah. that on, yeah. on it. Yeah, okay, but sure. Not, okay. Fire station, you right, know, right. other right, public okay. uses. Yeah. Okay. But not commercial. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Jay, you had said that this has been owned um, as by the state of Florida or by uh, city of Tampa. I was confused. So there are two parcels in this, and the large parcel that's just over 14 acres that actually fronts Manhattan is owned by the state of Florida. The smaller parcel is 2.4 acres, and it is actually the right of way. It's like a rail right of way. Goes looks like it goes right down to McDill. Air Force Base, and that is owned by the city of Tampa. Okay. And then. And both of them are to be used for the, the South Tampa Greenway. Okay. Uh, just, just, a, just a couple comments. Uh, and I, I guess my primary concern is with, with the flagpole, the 50 foot easement uh, that was once the, the rail right of way. Because um, the, the South Tampa Greenways and Trails does exist on the uh, the east side of Manhattan right now and I guess the the concern would be uh, if you're if you're going to change the alignment of the greenways and trails through there um, so that it takes the railroad alignment um, it's going to it, it's going to come in to Interbay Boulevard right where our uh, uh, truck entrance is at McDill Air Force Base so we have a we have a westbound left turn lane there and we will soon have two eastbound turn lanes going into the truck entrance from Enter Bay Boulevard so uh, that alignment will if if we're truly going to change where the greenways and trails turns and goes north that'll that'll have to be dealt with in design and just secondly more from the planning perspective and we just had the uh, we, we just had the the uh, report in the regular meeting this afternoon really showing the the lack of industrial property and in, in especially in this within the city of tampa of developable parcels and by putting this public uh, quasi public piece of property through what is industrial property on on either side of that it it, it seems like it would inhibit the development of that as an industrial parcel in south tampa uh, if someone wanted to, to put those parcels together. So um, once again, like we just said, if, if someone would want to come and do that, they're going to have to go back through this whole process again and take it from public, uh, semi, or qu public quasi-public back to some sort of uh, zoning or, or some sort of land use, which will allow them to have an industrial zoning, which you don't have with this proposal. So those are a couple of concerns just... Uh, for the South Tampa community and for McDill Air Force Base in particular. Yeah, I'm guessing, I'm, I'm not sure about, what's the current status of the property? I mean, I know it's owned by the state, the, the, the 14 acre site, I know, I understand the other part, it's owned by the city of Tampa, but the 14 acre site to me looks like it's just vacant land, it's not, a programmed space is that, that correct? Is correct it's really not a park that's correct currently. it is not dedicated as a park that is correct okay so and then do we know what is there a plan for the city for the state 
for what they they so, would like to have so yes yeah, the so there is a south tampa greenways and trails plan and it mm. does go through part of this part of the south tampa greenways and trails has actually opened up in gadsden park which is like a mile or so on the other side of the peninsula so this was actually purchased with funds through the state for recreation use so this will be a recreational use of some sorts or there would have to be one of those um, above my pay grade land swaps that Tallahassee does at times. So, but is there a dedicated park ready for it? No. Is it programmed? That's the issue of what I was talking with the commissioner earlier, that this portion of the trail that actually traverses the boundary of the Air Force Base is, stu is planned studied, not planned funded. So you see where what this is doing is this is all moving us in this direction to actually get ourselves ready for plan funded by having the land use in the right, si right area and then also at that time sure having more conversations with the Air Force Base as well as the community as a whole because at that time there will be some real money that will be spent to actually do the trail. So on page um, 8 of the staff report uh -huh. there is that trails map and yes. I guess I'm trying to understand we see where the existing trail is like mm -hmm. on the on along manhattan um i don't see that it get actually going through the the site the subject site is that going to change like how does the how does this trails map relate to what you're talking about so currently there is an existing trail that fronts the front portion of that property right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the 14 acre property they then have also mentioned and we're and we're on how about this we're, we're on the back portion of that, what we're talking about, with that 50-foot right-of-way, that 50-foot right-of-way that's owned by the city of Tampa that goes north-south. So those are the two areas that are, are looked at for the trail, and then the area in the middle of it, which is still that 14 acres, can be programmed as a park. That park has yet to be established, whether it is a 100% passive park, right? where you just have open space, almost as though it were, I'll use the term ELAP, but not ELAP, but you get where that's going, or whether it's something that actually is more of with what uh, Ms. Ornita mentioned earlier about a community center or something that's in it. That remains to be seen. But what they do have is planning for the actual greenway. So, Jay, on the map, can you just mm -hmm. point out sure. where the property is on this map? Where we are, right in this area right here, the solid green line is an existing trail, the darker solid green line, the lighter green line that actually traverses the Air Force Base and then juts up right in this area is the planned yet not funded, it's only studied. And this little 50 foot right of way is one side of it and then we have this side of it over here that is going through basically bisecting or going on each side of it, excuse me, bookending this 16 and a half acre site. Okay, Commissioner Rodriguez. And mm -hmm. uh, just to follow up with what Jay's saying, Bigdell Air Force Base has no, been an active partner with the city of Tampa in developing this greenways and trail alignment. I mean, uh, we started working this back in 2004 with the city, and we currently have, I believe, a 25 year lease with the city for the alignment that he's showing along the northern boundary of the base. And we're also negotiating right now or starting negotiations to extend that beyond that 2029 horizon because we uh, mm -hmm. we, we believe that uh, that that's going to benefit the uh, the community as well as the McDill Air Force Base so we're we're working we're working with the city on the greenways and trails alignment okay Commissioner Powell I um, think sure uh, this may not be the right time you know what I'm going to ask, but I'm kind of curious as with Ms. Commissioner Marino, and since this is kind of your area and where you live and everything, to me it seems like I'm concerned echoing some of my other commissioners about, you know, the loss of, you know, potential industrial space and there's not, you know, just a ton down there, you know, and this is going to be probably turned into some type of park and we've got Picnic, you know, Island and all that, you know, so close by, which is a huge park and it's gorgeous, you know, it's waterfront. Um, so it seems to me in my thought process that 
you know, you don't need, you've got another park, you got another park. I'm not sure how many parks you actually really need down there, but is this, you know, something that the community, you know, we've mentioned the Civic Association, and this is, hey, this is, we've been dying for this last 10 years or, you know. I'll just ask any other comments, questions? <laughs> Go ahead. Commissioner Marina? If, yeah, if I'm allowed to respond, at least as it relates to this particular property, um, the neighborhood uh, has been seeking a connection to Picnic Island. Right now, uh, you cannot walk to Picnic Island. There are no sidewalks on either side of Commerce uh, Street, which is the road that goes to Picnic Island. Uh, that's heavily used by trucks. So putting a sidewalk there probably isn't the safest thing. So having this access would be beneficial. Um, to uh, uh, Commissioner Rodriguez's point, um, the industrial uses down there, um, there is, are existing uses that are closer to Picnic Island. Uh, I don't want to speak for anyone else who lives in the neighborhood because I'm not speaking on their behalf. I can only repeat what was said in the meeting regarding this particular project. Uh, I can tell you, I think the biggest use right now of that piece of property is that it's um, used in the evenings by people who don't have another place to go and that's where they sleep. So that's the only thing going on in that property right now. If, if I could just add, I mean, this property is in public ownership. That's what the public semi-public land use category is to recognize. If we were to recognize that this was somehow going to continue to be viable for other non-residential uses, industrial or otherwise, I think that would be doing a disservice to the plan because it's it's in public ownership. It has, I mean, I believe the city and the state have full intentions of utilizing it for some public purpose. And I would rather us have a more accurate and transparent future land use map. So that's the intent of why we're trying to do these, land, these changes to the TU24 category. Partly because the category is 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 broad and is um, and when we see that there's a, tre a trend towards certain land use categories, we think it's better to articulate that in the future land use map, but also to make the the map more accurate. Because if then we go and pull, as Jay and Jennifer did in the industrial lands study, what is available for development and and this. Um, it's not accurate to show that this is transitional use 24 and available for industrial development. That's not accurate. That's why we changed the school to the north and some of the other schools to, again, be accurate about their ownership and what their, their future entitlement is. Okay, Commissioner Wilman. I guess I just feel more comfortable like not referring it at, to it as a park because it's really not a park right now. Fair enough. And if it's just, if it's because it's publicly owned, that makes sense it can be done you know something could be done with it under that public land use category so for that reason i'm you know i would be comfortable with the um the amendment as proposed but i think it's just important to not rep misrepresent what might be done with the site That's fair it. enough yeah i Most mean the trail definitely. might go through but mm -hmm. the trail might go through it doesn't mean it's going to become a park just having the trail go through it commissioner dowdy I'd like to move that we find proposed okay. future land use designation CBA 1903 <laughs> consistent with the Imagine 2040 comprehensive plan. Got a motion by Commissioner Dowdy, a second by Commissioner Joseph. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item number four, Tampa Comprehensive Am Amendment 19-05. Thank you, Mr. And Chairman. Again, Jay Collins, Planning Commission staff. The next one tonight is TACPA 19-05. This is directly next door uh, to what we just spoke about. So again, we are in South Tampa Planning District, Gandy Sun Bay South, but now we are actually focusing on Lois Avenue instead of South Manhattan. So the plan amendment site is outlined here uh, in uh, yellow. Uh, basically, this is an existing apartment complex. Uh, just to the east of that apartment complex across Lois, you can see another apartment complex further to the south hitting uh, Inner Bay. You can see more apartment complexes, multifamily housing. 
And then what we just saw on uh, the previous amendment, you can also see the transitional use 24 running on the west side of Lois as well as on the north side of Interbay with some of those intensive commercial as well as industrial uses that are uh, occurring there. And then again, the ever-present single-family detached that rings the entire neighborhood as well as Robinson High School just to the north. So this is publicly initiated. Again, this is part of the Transitional Use 24 Land Use Viability Study in which we are looking uh, to provide uh, a, a trend analysis to basically figure out whether or not the land use that is appropriate there, being the Transitional Use 24, is appropriate or if there would be a more appropriate land use for that area. This is a regular scale amendment, it's just over 14 acres, and staff is asking for residential 35 on this piece. So let's take a little walk around on South Lois Avenue. Uh, these are the apartments that are directly across the street. This is the gardens at South Bay Apartments on South Lois Avenue. Lois Avenue looking north. I'm actually south of the subject site here, looking north back up. Uh, you can see a little bit of the wall to the apartment complex uh, in this, oh, come on, in this general area right here. Uh, just to the south of it, there's another picture of it, but that's actually a landscaping business. And you can see on the east side, again, the wall to the apartment complex on that side. So let's go even further north. So now I'm on the north side of the subject property. Uh, this is getting close to single, well, obviously it is single family housing on the east side of Lois. And then on the west side of Lois is Robinson High School. Uh, there is a little bit of a different flavor over here. Lois Avenue dead ends into uh, Robinson High School. Ma uh, Manhattan, where we just were and talked about, goes from Inner Bay all the way back up to Gandhi. So this is just a little, little nook, if you will. South of the subject site, this is basically that um, uh, uh, land use, uh, land, land uh, landscaping, thank you. Landscaping mm -hmm. business that we spoke of. And then Lois Avenue, again, looking uh, further to the south, uh, the landscaping uh, is just over there to the uh, west, and again over to the east, you once again see uh, the apartment complexes. Uh, it's interesting to note here uh, the types of uses that we have down here, the amount of density that we have down here, and Lois Avenue with some of the uh, issues with uh, the open ditches and, and other things. So it's an issue that obviously Lois Avenue and the city needs to look at. So this is Interbay Self Storage on Interbay Boulevard. Again, this is that transitional use 24. This is an open storage, so you've got RVs, you've got boats, and the like there. So uh, property notice, we wanted to specifically take a moment to talk about this. Uh, we did send three certified mailings to the property owner in Hollywood. This includes the entire packet that went there. We did receive notice that they received all of that information, but we have not yet heard from the property owner. When I went out to put the signs up, I went into the leasing office, spoke with the leasing manager, spoke with the facilities manager, told them what it is that is going on here, basically gave them a little bit of information simply to say, if your residents start asking you what's happening, here's what you can tell them, and then here's my card if they're still not comfortable with your answer. So the adopted future land use map, again showing you the transitional use 24. Uh, also residential 35 directly to the east of the subject site, as well as some residential 20s to uh, 20 uh, north and east of the subject site, residential 10, uh, to the north and the east of the subject site, the transitional use 24 to the south. If the amendment were to be approved, showing the residential 35. So some of the potential intensities and densities here. The existing uh, would be 344 units. Currently, they actually have a PD on this site for 288 units. Uh, just over 900,000 square feet of uh, commercial uses could be allowed if they did not have that multifamily on there. Transitional use 24 is an either or, not a both. Uh, the potential for residential 35, uh, just over 500 units. Again, an either or. Um, I will say that uh, locational criteria is not met here. So there is that. We do put 375,000 square feet down there because again, uh, neighborhood support uses. So if they wanted a church, 
that does not need to meet locational criteria, then you could ask for a church that's several hundred thousand square feet if you wanted to. Uh, the amendment, if approved, would remove from consideration the following zoning classifications. None of these zoning classifications are utilized by the property for an apartment complex. It would remove industrial general, commercial intensive, and commercial general. So some of the consistency with the housing uh, section of the plan is to ensure an adequate supply of housing to meet Tampa's needs. Uh, again, uh, there are, are thousands and thousands of people that are projected to come into the city of Tampa in the planning horizon. <laughs> Provide additional workforce housing close to employment and or multimodal facilities. Uh, as we've mentioned just in the previous, uh, McGill Air Force Base is located just south of this subject site, McGill Air Force Base. Between civilian and federal employees, there's just over 17,000 people that are employed by the Air Force Base. Uh, some of the future land use policies, again, to sustain multifamily residential areas. We've shown that there is multifamily that exists along this section of Lois Avenue. And promote a residential strategy that increases the availability of housing at densities that promote walking and transit uh, use near those employment concentrations or residential services and amenities. And again, this also does have an affordable housing component in it. Uh, with that, staff recommends that the Planning Commission uh, find the proposed map amendment be found consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the Imagine 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan. I uh, thank you for your time. This concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, would the city like to speak? Randy? Yeah, this, uh, there were no objections. Or, yeah, no objections by the city of Tampa. Okay, thank you. Any public comment on this item? No public comment. Any questions from commissioners? Commissioner Green? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think I'm a little confused on this one. <laughs> this is an existing uh, apartment complex. Um, so this amendment, um, um, if approved, would allow them to, to tear this down and build it at a greater intensity. Potentially, yes. Okay. okay. Not add on to what's there now. I mean, I don't know enough about how their project is designed as to whether or not there's land to add on to what's there now. But I, I mean, I, th I would think they would need to truly redevelop the site to take advantage of the type of density that would be allowed by this category. Okay. And, and sir, they would also have to rezone the property to do that. So this does not give them that right. Right. It, it just it allows them the opportunity to ask to rezone. It doesn't give right, them right. the units. Right. Okay. Commissioner Rodriguez. Oh, Commissioner Dickerson. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> I don't speak that much. Um, <laughs> so we are experiencing a lot of growth in South Tampa. Um, West Shore Elementary is the assigned elementary for this property, and Robertson Robinson High School is um, the high school assigned to this property. Um, the applicants at this time, it shows that they, they probably won't meet uh, the level of service for elementary and high school. They do have an avenue at a site plan to do a proportionate share mitigation agreement for that. So I just wanted the applicant to know that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions? Someone like to make a motion? I would like to make a motion. Okay, Commissioner Wilma. Uh, I move that we find the proposed future land use designation change for City of Tampa CPA 1905 from transitional use 24 to residential 35 on um, the 14.36 acres consistent with the Imagine 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan and for this recommendation to Tampa City Council. Okay, we've got a motion by Commissioner Wilma and a second by Commissioner Marino. Any further discussion before we vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, next up is, uh, last up, Tampa Comforts of Plan Amendment 19-06. Good evening, uh, commissioners. David Hay, Planning Commission staff. Uh, the next and last uh, amendment is a text amendment. Uh, it is uh, text amendment 1906. Uh, a little background regarding the proposed amendment. Uh, the City of Tampa has submitted this text amendment uh, after discussions with stakeholders, property owners, and Planning Commission staff. Currently, under the Community Commercial 35 and the Community Mixed Use 35 Future Land Use categories, 
vertical mixed-use development located on arterial roadways, meaning acreage requirements, can get a bonus to their buy right floor area ratio going from the 1.0 FAR uh, to a 1.5 uh, if they're meeting those requirements under that bonus. This amendment would extend that bonus to collector roadways uh, within the city of Tampa's designated urban villages. Um, the, as of right now, all development on the city's collector roadways uh, located within that community mixed use 35 or the community commercial 35 future land use categories again is capped at a one by right with the option to enter into a development agreement to help fund identified improvements to get to the maximum of a two FAR. Some developers have stated that this payment reduces the financial viability of constructing uh, vertical mixed-use development. This amendment would reduce uh, the potential bonus payments, uh, thus further incentivizing the preferred identified development pattern on the city of Tampa's uh, main quarters. Uh, we did send this out to review. There were no objections from any of the reviewing agencies. And Planning Commission staff has reviewed the comprehensive plan and found the proposed language to amend the Community Mixed Use 35 and the Community Commercial 35 future land use categories consistent with the adopted uh, policy guidance within the comprehensive plan. We found two main areas of consistency. The first are policies dealing with the promotion of a mixed use uh, development pattern, especially along the city's uh, main quarters. And the second uh, area dealt with uh, the promotion, if my tablet works, the promotion of a sustainable form of development within the city's identified urban villages. The vertical mixed use is one of the preferred uh, ways of providing that sustainable uh, development pattern, that mixture that's sought for in, in those urban villages. So based on that, the Planning Commission staff recommends that the proposed text amendment be found consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the Imagine 2040 Tampa Comprehensive Plan. And that concludes my presentation. Okay. Does the City of Tampa want to comment on this? <laughs> yes, there's no objections. We're part, of, we're part of the staff that worked on it, so we're actually obviously supportive of it. Okay. Thank you. Any public comment on this item? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, board members. My name is David Mechanic, 305 South Boulevard, uh, Tampa, Florida. I'm here on behalf of ABC Capital, a uh, property owner in the West Tampa Urban Village. And I'm here on, on, in support of the proposed text amendment. Uh, w w review of all the policies that uh, are in the plan regarding urban villages suggests that the whole point of the urban villages is to promote mixed use and higher density development in those locations. So this particular text amendment will in fact accomplish or better accomplish that objective. And so for that reason, uh, we as one property owner would support the amendment. And I would also point out that the encouragement of higher densities in those villages will also support uh, a, a additional transit service because we all know that density promotes the use of transit. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Any other public comment? Any questions from commissioners? Okay, no questions. Oh, Commissioner Marino? I'd like to make a motion. Okay, that's good. Uh, I, uh, I move that we find Tampa Comprehensive Plan Amendment TACPA 1906 consistent with the imagined 2040 Tampa Conference plan and forward this recommendation to Tampa City Council for its consideration. Okay, motion by Commissioner Marina, second by Commissioner Powell. Okay, got second by Commissioner Powell. Any further discussion before we vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, that was our last item. Uh, meetings adjourned. Thank you.